Hey folks, this is Dr. Dave. I'm at BCF Midwest, number 17 in Chicago in 2022. I'm here with Alistair showing you one of the things that I, I thought was most interesting, and I'll let him tell you what he built. Hi, Alistair, sir. So what is it that you built here? So I've got a couple of kit projects here. So this is a computer made with just TTL logic gates. Uh, so this is all like late 1970s, uh, just 74F series chips. So 70s technology and it's something that you built? It's actually based on an idea I had at high school. Um, I was always interested in building my own CPUs. Mm -hmm. uh, so I came up with a very simple design and I like the idea of putting the ALU in a ROM as well. Um, so just one ROM chip, one RAM chip, and then minimal amount of logic. But I never built it. But then I, I saw a, a YouTube video about the Gigatron. Uh, so there's a couple of guys that built this TTL computer and sort of revived this idea. So I decided to make my own version. It's slightly different. So it has a built-in sort of graphics section which generates a native text mode. So this can actually do full resolution text mode. Cool. Uh, so when I'm looking at the board here, can you kind of give us a tour? Of yeah, so there's basically this section here is the CPU. Um, the CPU has to do pretty much everything, so there's a lot of bit banging going on in terms of these the two serial interfaces. So you have the actual uh, PS2 keyboard, which is bit banged, so I had to write software to do that. And then there's a 9600 board serial connection as well. Uh, so that's kind of independent of this section, but what this section does is it alternates uh, the CPU has access to the RAM, and then I call it the GPU, but it basically swaps over and then this is scanning the memory to generate the video signal. So it can, it can do a, this is the actual graphics mode, 256 colors, and then it has a shift register, so it has also the text mode, which is what's going on here. So then how many general purpose registers does it have? Is it so, one? Yeah, so basically you have a, there's a program count, which is only eight bits, and then you have a page register, which makes up the other eight bits, so that's this here. So there's an accumulator and then a single index register, so X, Y, mm -hmm. um, and then just some of the control logic. Uh, there's a few buffers. There's another register called HL, which is two nibbles. So the, the lookup table is quite small, so it uses a nibble and a byte. So they're only 4K. Um, so that's a CPU, and then the GPU basically shadows it. So there's another index register here, but there's a counter for the horizontal scan. So that's counting the memory this way. So the original project... That yeah, so show me, show me what you have over here, too. Yeah, so this is... Um, so, I, so I built this, and I, I was familiar with the Gigatron design, so I decided to make a version of that in the same kind of form factor. I see. And then this one is... So this one comes with software. I had to write all the software for this one. And that was probably the only percent of the work to do the software. But this one already comes with the software. So I simplified their design a little bit. They had um, a lot more logic chips for the ALU. So I used these. These are actually very late 70s as well. These are programmable logic chips. Okay. Like the original version. So one of the things I noticed, so you, you have this printed up in another color, and then it has this sexy uh, old ceramic thing. Yeah. What is the deal if you're using new TTL chips? How come there's that old chip in there? Well, that's just uh, just an example. Uh, this this would come with this is like the modern version. So when I first worked on this, I had uh, one of these chips, like the 128k chip. And so I saw a couple of these on eBay. Like these are the original one megabit. Oh neat. Chips. So that's where you're really retro here. Yeah. First you're retro in a design yeah. from simple chips, but then yeah. uh, but then you have that ceramic. And in I, there. I sort of want to see if I can actually work, get it to run with the real sort of technology. These chips really haven't changed, but the memory is. That's, that's kind of the cheat, because you would never build something like this in the 70s in this much memory. I see. And can I ask you, um, so from doing, at the point of doing the project, the series of them, what was fun about it for you, or what did you have to learn, or what did you learn accidentally as a process, in the process? It's, so actually, I, I kind of went to school for this, so I did digital systems engineering. Okay. I ended up going to software, so my electronic skills kind of got through so the end of the 80s, early 90s. I thought this was going to take three years, and it did take three years. Okay. Um, and it was a pandemic project, so I was probably doing a lot more Nice. If somebody wanted to do something like what you did here, is this something that uh, a hobbyist can find? I think so, yeah. There's actually a Hackaday project for this, so I documented it right from the beginning. Um, cool. This is based on the Gigatron, so there's a Hackaday project for this. Thanks, Alistair. Thanks.